Welcome to part four of sculpting Urzarl in ZBrush. And in this segment, uh, we're going to look at how I've posed the character using the base mesh that we created in the previous parts. Uh, if you've missed those previous sections, then catch that link in the upper corner there and go back and check out the, the previous sculpting videos to see how we got to this point. Uh, so from here, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just working on sculpting or posing the legs to, to uh, balance the character and get him into the uh, action pose that we're looking for. So I'm using the lasso masking tool in order to select the areas that I want to move and, and isolate the areas that I don't want to move. Uh, and so I like to use the lasso tool because like if you zoom out on the, the screen and make the, the mesh pretty small, the area that you select, it creates a, a soft edge along where the selection point is. So it gives you a little bit of latitude for, you know, moving the parts without creating a crease across where the, uh, the mesh is selected or, or it's where it's masked. So, uh, so what I want on this is where we're going to adjust these bits of the anatomy. I want there to be a smooth transition between the area that's masked and the area that isn't. So, um, so I use the lasso tool and zoom out. And then when you can see here, it, it gives a really soft kind of a, uh, like a faded area where the mask is and it doesn't create a crease across the mesh. Now, uh, once I get finished posing, I'll go back and, and you'll see in the next part of this that um, I'm going to sculpt in some additional details and like fabric creases or, or fabric folds in the clothing and that sort of thing and, and sort of adjust the anatomy a little bit more uh, once I get the character in the pose that I want. Uh, but in this instance, I can start from a, a base mesh and uh, and pose that character, uh, you know, in this in, in the direction that I, I want to pose it for, for this particular piece. Now, for example, if this was going to be a trooper type, I could sculpt one trooper and then go back and, and make instances of it. So I could just, I could open this base mesh again in another file and then make a completely different pose. So, so doing instances of troopers or conversions, uh, you know, is what they'd be called back in the day, you know, if I was sculpting some putty. And it's, it's a lot harder to do because unless you're starting from, uh, well, what, what you wind up having to do is like, this is a set of legs. Like if this was gonna be a trooper, this would be a set of legs that it's like, okay, well, I'd have to sculpt, you know, three of these that would be identical in different poses and then go back and then add the things that were different, you know, over the top of them, you know, to each one. So it's, it's a, a much faster and economical way to create multiples of the same sculpt for things that are like, um, you know, troop, uh, troop types that are basically, it's the same, it's the same guy, you know, whether he's a soldier guy, you know, from uh, the Civil War period or, or uh, all, you know, all the way up to uh, sci-fi stormtroopers or whatever you want to call them, space marines, that kind of thing. So you can sculpt one guy and then, you know, pose him out a, a, a lot of different ways. Uh, so at this point, I'm taking a look at where the feet are placed, you know, where I'm going to want them placed in the pose and make sure that they're flat against the base. And then I'm taking in, like in this instance, I've got the belt. And so as a separate part, I can just move that back into place where it's shifted, where his weight has shifted over onto his right leg and then position that belt back into place. Now what's going to happen is, is since the stance, the legs are wider, than they were in the A-frame pose. I'm gonna to have to go back and move the belt around and move the pants around to, to realign them with where they match up with the belt and the, the pouches and so forth. Uh, because we don't want any gaps or anything under those pouches uh, because that would create a problem in molding and so forth. And it, it wouldn't look right. They'd be sort of floating out into space and the pouches don't do that. They they actually lay against the anatomy uh, because of gravity and, and other factors. So, so yeah, we want to go back and, and make sure that all of that stuff aligns up to where it was. Now, because of how I selected the mesh, there's this weird artifact in his pants uh, down between his legs where they were spread out in the, in the pose. So I've got to go back and use the pinch tool 
to kind of close that back up and then re-sculpt the anatomy uh, or the, the, the surface of the fabric where it looks like it's stretched out across there. And going back and using the Orb Cracks tool is uh, a great tool for that. And that's one of my favorite tools to sculpt with. So uh, just because of the, the uh, it doesn't leave weird artifacts in the mesh. It, it creates a nice smooth crease uh, across the peak where it, it uh, creates the ridge. Or like if you're cutting into it, it's, it's got sort of a V-shaped groove into it, which it looks similar to the same type of uh, crease that the steel tools the, that I used when I was sculpting in putty. So it, it kind of replicates what I'm already used to sculpting with. Uh, here on the pants, I've got to adjust where those pouches are, make sure there's no gaps under the pouches since those legs have moved. And so I'm just going back and using the move tool to put those back into place where they should go. So it's looking pretty good at this point. Uh, I'm going to flatten out the bottoms of the feet so that there's a, a consistent area across those where they're going to match up onto the base. And then I can move that, that um, line down to, to the edge of the frame to kind of make sure that those, those are flat all the way across the bottom. Okay, so here I'm shifting the torso over and lining that up with the belt. Uh, so I'll have to go back and uh, adjust some, some areas where the bottom of the vest intersects with the belt. Uh, there's a couple of places where it pokes through. So I'll have to adjust the, the edge of that. And here I'm twisting the torso just a little bit to sort of bring him in line with the way that the legs are, are um, the legs are posed to kind of create that balance. And a lot of times I'll do that in two or three places on the torso, depending on how it twists or how it bends to add balance to the, um, the pose. That's a problem that I see a lot of times with digital sculpts where uh, if a sculptor isn't really familiar with how a traditional model is balanced on a base, um, because there's no gravity in the 3D software, you can basically pose a character and you know any way that you want. And if you don't pay attention to how gravity actually works and, and how the mass is supported on the, the feet of the model where it attaches to the base, then the, the pose is going to look unnatural, particularly in, in running poses or, or action poses where characters are leaning one side or another. And I see this a lot with like armored characters that are in running poses or so forth, they look off balance. And I'm not talking about in a good way, like where it looks like, oh, well, they're they're running fast. So of course they're going to be off balance. And you see that in, in comic books and so forth. But there's still a balance to the eye and there's a balance to the weight and the mass of the model where it connects to the base that you have to have on a practical model. And if you're not familiar with sculpting traditionally where you understand how that mass and those forms interact with each other, then it's going to look, it's going to look wrong. It's not going to look like it's, it's balanced correctly, you know, that it would be in that particular pose. So here, when I looked at the legs against the torso, it, it looked like he was leaning too far, you know, over onto that supporting right leg. So what I did was I went ahead and moved it out away from the body a little bit more and brought it more in line with that right shoulder so that it looks like it's supporting the weight of the character. And then as I tilt the torso over to the right, a little, over to its right a little bit more, it creates more of a straight line from his left paw where it would attach to the base all the way up through his right shoulder. And so it creates a sense of weight that the, the weight of his upper body is resting on his right leg. And it, it creates a, a bit, it represents the mass of the character a little bit more. 
So otherwise, it would just look like the model was Im improperly placed on the base and it was just leaning too far over to one side if I hadn't moved that leg out. And these are things, these are details that you have to keep in mind or that you have to be aware of whenever you're crafting these characters, particularly you know, in a 3D space where there's not actual gravity or actual the mass of the model uh, to, to dictate where those positions are going to go. Or, or which direction it's going to go. So these are just little fine adjustments in order to uh, line up that upper body with where it's placed on the, the lower body. You want to make sure that there's no uh, mesh poking through, like the make sure the pouches aren't you know sticking up through the vest or anything like that where they're intersecting. So that would be a matter of, of just taking that section of the vest and, and moving it out over. And, you know, depending on how thick you're wanting to represent that fabric, you know, there, there may be a deformation. You know, if it was just a, a wispy piece of cloth that was laying over that, then you would have to actually sculpt in a little ridge or a corner where it would look like that the pouches were underneath it. But in this instance, since she's got kind of a, a thick padded vest, then... Uh, then it just needs to make sure that it doesn't intersect through. Uh, so here I'm going to move on to the arms and start adjusting where I think I want the pose for uh, his pistol arm to be. Uh, and, <laughs> and I didn't really have a good idea of what I wanted this particular pose to be for his right arm. Uh, and I'll go through a couple of different iterations of that. And the, and the cool thing about this is is that, you know, because I wasn't starting from a piece of art that I was working from, it was really just, you know, straight ahead, uh, you know, seeing what I could do. I was able to experiment a little bit with the pose and kind of figure out something that, you know, I thought looked appropriate. Um, so I went through a couple of experimentations on the arm to see, you know, where I wanted the pose. And there was a lot of factors to take into account uh, because one, I didn't, I didn't really want to do separate parts. I, I wanted to do him all as one piece, but there just wasn't really a way to do that all in one piece and have it come out in the mold the, the way that I wanted. So I wound up having to take the the hands off uh, and key those to where, you know, those would be on a separate sprue. And then, uh, then you can just glue them on you know, when you put the model together. So I was thinking it's like, well, do I want... Do I want sort of an open pose where, you know, he's holding up the gun in his right hand and, and see how that looked. And when you're looking at the mold plane, uh, and the mold plane is going to be the dividing line that goes through the model for the two halves of the mold. So everything has to line up and it can't be really over, you know, a 45 degree arc when you're looking at the top down from the sculpt or from the bottom up. Because you know that, you know, one half of the model is going to be in one part of the mold and the other half is going to be in the other half of the mold. So uh, if you have uh, objects that stick off like arms or legs and they're going in different directions, then what that's going to do is it's going to create a mold block where part of the mold or part of the model is going to get buried in the mold in one of the mold halves and you won't be able to get the, the part out of the mold. So here's another consideration when you're... you're uh, sculpting for production is that, you know, the model has to be uh, posed in a way that it can be, you know, replicated in um, a molding and casting process. So I know a lot of sculptors out there that are sculpting just for print, and that's fine. You can do a lot of really cool dynamic poses, and you can have, you know, hoses and braids and things, you know, flying off of the character in different uh, directions to, to create a dynamic pose and so forth. But uh, taking into account the, the production process of uh, practical molding and casting, you have to look at your model and look at the pose and determine, okay, well, how is this going to go, you know, into and out of the mold whenever it's cast? And so like here where the arm is, when you look at that, there's just too much of a gap between the, the front knee and the the gun where it would cause you know molding problems uh, for casting so I thought okay well I'm gonna have to 
I'm going to have to go back and, and do that. So I'm, I'm looking at some other things to try to think of, well, how do I want to move that while I'm adjusting bits on, you know, the rest of the character. So I'm making these little micro adjustments on the costume as I'm trying to work out in my head what I want to do with that right arm. So I thought, okay, well, let me move on to the left arm and then I, I can still think about it a little bit and maybe I can use the left arm to get sort of an idea of what I should do with the right arm in order to create balance. So, cause I knew, well, he's, he's got the blade, he's got that sword, you know, in his left hand. So that's really gonna go one way. And uh, uh, as, he's, as he's leaning off, you know, onto his, his right leg, I kind of wanted his, his left arm out in sort of a balance where, you know, it looks like he's just about to, to rush forward, you know, you know, starting off on his, his right leg there, you know, headed off that way. Or maybe he's, he's uh, dodging, you know, a, a blaster shot, you know, on one side and is dodging out of the way. And, and uh, so his, his arm goes out in balance of, of that action. So, so it's getting pretty close here to, you know, what I was, I was thinking of initially, initially, of, you know, what I was trying to tell in this pose. So we're going to go back to the right arm now, and I'm going to try a couple of different things before I settle on the final pose of where he was at. Maybe something like this. Maybe I can cross his body there. Uh, but if I do that, I can't have any gaps between the arm and the gun because you can see that, well, that would that would create, like I was saying, mold lock with the gun. So at, at this point, it's like I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to want something that's, I want something that's like that. So I'm just going to have to go ahead and and deal with the fact that I'm going to have to make a separate part for the gun and I might as well do that, you know, with the sword. The cool thing about that is, particularly with the sword arm, is that if you're going to model this character, uh, that gives the painter uh, that's going to be assembling it a little bit of an option on like, well, if you want to give him a different weapon, well, you could do that and that would make converting him a little bit easier. Uh, you could also give him a different weapon in his left hand, since that's a separate part, and that would make that a little bit easier. Uh, plus, if you wanted to have the the sword, you know, up like it is now, kind of machete-like, you could do that. That gives you an option, or it could go down the other way, you know, where it's it's face down, like he's he's just following through on, uh, you know, a cutting stroke uh, with his left hand. So it kind of gives you a little bit of uh, some variety for kind of how you want to put the model together. And I thought, well, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So let's just go ahead and go forward with making those separate parts on a sprue. And these are all considerations that I think about as I'm sculpting the model. Uh, even if I was working from a piece of art, I still have to be aware of where the model is going to be uh, where it's going to be molded, where the mold lines are going to go. And I don't, I actually, I saw a comment on a forum one time, of somebody was commenting that the sculptor put mold lines on the model. And it's like, well, that's, that's just an artifact of the molding and casting process. Sculptors don't put mold lines on sculpts. That That's, I mean, it, the pose determines you know, how the, the model is going to be molded, but the actual mold lines themselves are kind of a random uh, artifact of the molding process. So even though we only control, you know, how the pose is made, uh, the mold itself determines where the mold lines are going to go. And that's, so I thought that was a funny comment uh, from someone who uh, didn't quite understand <laughs> what the, the process was. So, um, So in, the, in this in this regard, I think I've kind of settled on the fact that the the bot the uh, right arm where the pistol is is going to cross the body, and it's 
it, it looks okay here, but I think it's, it's like once I get the head into place and I kind of look at like where that's going to be going and how that's going to be posed, then I thought, okay, well, uh, I'm going to need to raise that up a little bit. So, so he'll have sort of a, a, a guarded look um, using his right arm. So it's starting to get there. It's starting to come together on you know, kind of what I'm thinking of. And what we're going to have to do is, we'll, you know, I'll go back and adjust some of the bits to, to line up with the pose. So, so like in the first part of the video where we sculpted the mane, this is more of a symmetrical mane that I have as sort of a placeholder on that. And we're going to look at in the next part of sculpting out the details on this in order to flesh out this pose and and make it you know the, the finalized sculpt so if you've enjoyed watching this part of it so far uh, you know hit that subscribe button and hit, hit the uh, the little bell to be notified on when I'm going to be posting the, the final uh, episode of this sculpting process for Urzarl. Uh, we have just got the castings back on this as I was making this part of the video and uh, from the uh, metal oak castings did the uh, uh, production on this for us and, and made the molds and run the ran those in CO cast thermoplastic so we're very excited to have those and they are in the web store right now and I'll put those links in the description if you want to go and check out the uh, the final model uh, there's pictures of it over on the web store so uh, we'll be wrapping up this in part five and I'll be sculpting in the final details and getting this ready to print and go to mold so uh, you know thanks for sitting in on all of this and and checking out how I've sculpted this model in ZBrush <laughs>